Well, what? <laughs> okay, so hello, I, hello. I I was so nervous. Well, I wasn't too nervous because I like I know Mecca, but I I know I was nervous to ask you to do this because I was like Mecca usually doesn't blend in with like my art stuff or like my like my projects and stuff like that. But that I was so true. Who <laughs> I know. I was like, who else am I going to ask to be a part of this, and who else would I feel like more comfortable with than with you? So, I'm excited. Can so, you- what was awesome is I like read some of your questions, and I was like, I have no idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm like the most like unknowledgeable lesbian ever. Oh, I you know I'm like, it's okay, but that's like that's kind of. I don't want to say that's kind of the point. Okay, so like the point of this is to like get people to have conversations about blackness and queerness that they don't typically talk about like in regular settings. And I, well, one, I love you because you're my sister. Like that's period. But um, I love you so much because <laughs> for this particular project because you're like, you're like a hardworking like human and loving human and you 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 live your life and you're you're passionate about like the work that you do and like how you love others and to me that's just like that's what that's the whole point of this like that's that's it (laughs) i was so excited i was like mia asked me (laughs) (laughs) okay so for a little bit of context um, Mecca is my sister from another mister. I've known Mecca and like sister from another mother too. Um, <laughs> but I've known you since I was how old Mecca? Like eight? Yeah. So I met you guys in 2003. Oh shit. Okay. Hold up. That's like, t- okay. Maybe 11. I've known you since I was 11 years old. Yes. Something and- like that. Yeah. I remember you guys were very young when I first came to LA. Yeah. I'll never forget, like, when I first met you, you're like, yeah, I'm from Texas. And I was like, do they have MTV in Texas? I don't <laughs> That's like a, a memory that I have the first time I met you. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, we have MTV. <laughs> you're like, duh. I was like, <laughs> we have cable too. <laughs> um, do you, so I'm, so Mecca is a part of my family. You were part of my family. You were like literally my big sister. I don't have a big, I don't have a big sister that like that I was raised with, but you are, have been someone that's been so like stable and beautiful in my life. And I just want to say, I love you. I love you too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you want to tell us about yourself? So name, yeah. age, occupation, and your pronouns. Okay, so my name is Mecca Annie. I'm originally from Oklahoma. I grew up in Oklahoma, went to school in Texas, came out to California like in 03. So I've been out here a little over almost 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, I do CAT scan at a trauma center. And uh, so it's basically imaging and uh, I love it. And it's a very fast paced environment and uh, I get to help people. And I think what I love about it is that I don't have them like for a large amount of time. It's very quick. Like our interactions are very quick and I love to talk. And so bits and pieces of me come out and bits of pieces of them come out. And then I'm like, all right, cool. And so I'm with them for about 15, 20 minutes tops. And then I'm like, all right, back to your nurse. But uh, I love it. I love what I do. Nice. And your pronouns are she, hers. Yes. I had to learn this. I was so happy. I was so clueless. I was like, I'm clueless. And I'm a she, her, hers, right? Yes. She, her, hers. Um, <laughs> tell us about, um, um, about what made you decide to move from, uh, Oklahoma. Well, you, you went from Oklahoma to Jackson to California. Can you tell us about what that, that process was like? One second that broke up. Oh yeah. So, so you went, you were born and raised in Oklahoma, then you moved to Jackson. Oh, hold on. It's saying I'm we're breaking up. Hold on. Let me, let me pause. If we resume it, if it comes, yeah, I should come back on. Okay. So you were born and raised in Oklahoma and then I, mm-hmm. you moved to Jackson, Mississippi for school and then you came to California. Yeah. So I kind of jumped around. I started off in Texas and then I came out here. And then your mom helped me get a scholarship and I went to 
Jackson and then I came back out. And so I've been out here since solid since 07 when I got into grad school. And I don't know. I just, I love it out here. Yeah. It's different and I love it. And I feel very homey out here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you're here. Um, if you feel comfortable, what's your, well, you, you stated your gender expression, but how do you sexually identify? Um, lesbian. Mm -hmm. So I'm just Plano. I wish I and I was even looking. I'm like, am I pan? Am I bi? And I'm like, no, I'm just plain lesbian. I love women. Yay. I love them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just, I love the feistiness and all that's wrapped up in it. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this too. Like Mimi, what's bi? Um, well, you know what bi is, but you're like, what's pan? What's poly? I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I need help. Yeah. And I'm glad, I'm glad that I, uh, that we, that last time we went to Vegas, I was able to like break it down to you as best as I could. Cause sometimes I, I talk like too like heady. I'm like, they use like $3,000 words. It's like, bitch, just, you know, just, is this, this, that, the other move on with your life. Right. I'm on the dating apps clueless with, I have no earthly idea that what that means. Swipe right, swipe left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Nice. <laughs> so, um, where do you find home? You uh, I, where do you find home? Like, so, I when I saw this question, like it hit so hard for me. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in Oklahoma in a very small white community, mm -hmm. and I never, never, it never felt right. And I, I was popular and I had all these friends and all my friends were white. And then I never had a boyfriend and I just didn't understand it. And I didn't, and, and this is like finding that, like, I just never felt home. I never felt like this is my community, people respect or, you know, I just never. And then I came out here and I don't know, it's like, it was the Mecca for me. I found the big city where nobody really cares and you get to be who you are and then what was amazing is i found a family with you guys where i could be lesbian and i could laugh and i could joke and i could be my loud self and i've never felt more home than meeting you guys and being out here and just being able to be in my skin and know that it's okay mm -hmm. like nobody is judging me nobody could care less of what i'm doing and then being in my small town and it's like, oh my God, like, what is she doing? She doesn't have kids yet. She doesn't have this. And so I found home with your guys' unit and just feeling like I am in my skin and I'm fine. Mm -hmm. And that has been like one of the many blessings I've ever been blessed with is like coming into your family and you guys just accept me for who I am. And I'm like, yeah, I tell people all the time, oh yeah, I have, I have three sisters. I have two brothers and they're like, huh? And I'm like, you don't have to understand it. I understand it. And like, for real, I was like, we might not be blood, but like, I would literally do anything for them. And yeah. so I found home out here. Nice. And just for like, I don't think people, I don't talk about my family too much um, on the internet, but I come from a big ass, loud ass family. <laughs> <laughs> there's my mom, there's my dad, there's, Mecca, me, um, Shelton, Sheila, Layla, and um, every time you're just like an extension of us. We're wild, we're crazy, we're rambunctious, and you just like come in the mix, and it just you make everything so much sweeter amongst all of us. <laughs> I love it that I feel like sometimes we even fight like true siblings. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, Mia's pissed yeah. at me right now. That's yeah. okay. And <laughs> she was pissed at me another day and that's okay. And mama Ruth is ready to put her foot in my butt and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shelton is ready to kill me again and that's okay. And so I don't know. I just feel so at home. Not like, oh, we're kind of like, like, no, I feel like I'm a sibling. Like <laughs> straight up, I'm a sibling. And uh, can't get rid of me because I'm there. I'm like, it's going to be here to to the day is over. <laughs> So the earth comes crumbling down like a, you're definitely an extension. You're a part of us, you're an extension of us. I'm so happy that I have you in my life. Yeah, um, I, I've learned so much. And I've got to like watch you grow and go. And I'm just like, 
at mm -hmm. all at all the time you're like i'm doing this and i'm doing that and i was like she's it she's awesome and i'm so proud i'm like yep that's my sister uh what are you searching for mecca ah uh, you know as i go through my ages here and i keep on growing and trying to figure out things and you think you got certain things figured out and then all of a sudden i don't know i felt like i've been in stable relationships and i knew who i was and now i'm just feeling like i'm evolving in my own skin mm -hmm. and i'm searching for everything else that comes along with it like you think you're just one dimensional individual and then i'm growing and like having different ideas and i want this and i want that and uh at the end of the day just peace peace with everything peace with work peace with family peace with friendships peace with partners or you know whatever's going to come i'm just looking for searching for the peace because mm -hmm. i feel like it's an ongoing thing and so, um, yeah, I'm just searching for peace. And uh, of course, that lovely partner that would like to wipe me up. I'm ready for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I admire you so much because you're so, um, you're very clear about like what you want. You're like, I want a wife. I want children. I want this uh, home yeah. and stability. And it's so, yeah, it's admirable. Cause I feel like sometimes people are like, I just want to be a hoe and I just want to do that. And I goes like, no, I, I know who I am and what I want. Yeah. And like, I don't know if I can, I don't even know if I'd be good at it. <laughs> You've tried it though. You've had experiences of it. I think the right person's coming for you, Mecca. I really do. All right. I'm ready. I'm, well, I'm preparing my, I'm pre my future wife to be, I'm preparing myself for you. Oh, <laughs> okay that's so beautiful um so uh you texted me about this last night but <laughs> ask it. In, this in, is so nice. i have notes honey i have notes that i've written because i was like oh my gosh i don't know this is my first interview well you've never been like interviewed <laughs> for just like anything like even when you play basketball oh, like random like basketball like oh how was it and i'm like yeah okay whatever but never like deep thoughts about myself and like how i view things i was like i need notes <laughs> yeah, that's dope okay let's let's see what you got in your notes um all right yeah or in stories or like in television where do you see yourself i feel like i have always found appreciation or love for movies where like the underdog won whether it be at love whether it be at a game whether it be any aspect of life i just feel like i'm like hey that's me like i got out of my small town and i went to college and i was the first one to go and i got my degree and i found a career and i found peace love and a family and like i feel like i just grabbed little pieces out of everything so i couldn't put one like so many movies come to mind where I'm just like ah it's just a piece of the puzzle that I've taken from that movie and like called it my own mm. so it's been it, it like I just can't put like one on pinpoint and the only one I could really come up with was like love and basketball and that was because I totally love basketball it had nothing to do with anything else besides like winning at something and I feel like I do that a lot I just want to win at something can you tell us like, about what I'm sorry, I cut you off. Yeah, yeah. No, go. About your relationship to basketball, like what that what that means to you, how you started, and um, yeah, like how <clears throat> you felt so, this person now. I think what happened is I grew up in a small town, and I always knew I wanted to get out. I didn't want to do what everybody did. It's like you get married and you have babies and you stay here. And I was like, no that is not going to be me like one way or another i'm gonna find a way to get out i live with a single parent so i knew like college i needed to find a way to pay for college mm -hmm. and so i just and i love basketball i love sports in general i played all sports and i was blessed that when i got hurt when basketball i was able to play softball but i just the drive i drove myself to be just really good yeah like really good i needed to be i needed a, a ticket out Mm -hmm. And uh, I got that ticket out and I would say like love and basketball happened like 
in between like my junior junior high and like high school years and so that movie I probably I don't even know how many times I watched it and this is on VHS right like yeah wow. yeah that I just aged myself right <laughs> and I would movie over and over and over and over and over with oh she got out and she went to USC and I'm going to college too like and so I just think different movies like that where people get out and they and they do more than what people think they can that like I gravitate to those things doesn't matter who the character is just when I see that they are like no that's my dream I'm gonna go get it that I'm like I'm gonna go get it too wow okay I didn't know that Mecca. I didn't know yeah. that about um about like the 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 the, the movies that you gravitate towards um when do you feel most safe oh i would say that safety is crazy safety is very crazy and i'm starting to learn that i have a lot of abandonment issues <laughs> and ah yes who would have thought and uh I feel like I feel the most safe when I'm confident in my surroundings. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, not saying I can't go out and be confident, but where the vibe is good, mm -hmm. the energy is there. Um, and I say that like, even with my hospital, like it's a trauma center. And so things get crazy, but like, I can be very calm, cool and collective in that moment because like, I can understand why somebody's yelling at me because they're in pain, they're in, you're in hurt. And I think when I get in places that <clears throat> I can't feel the vibe, then I become totally feeling unsafe with my surrounding. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. Like even being in a room with the strangers, but the vibe is, you, you just, an inert vibe is good and I feel safe. Yeah. And it's, and I really haven't always been in tune to that, which is like just now coming around where I'm like, no, I feel I feel okay. Like, I'm good. I feel safe. Some people will say it's like, oh, when I'm in, in a relationship, I feel safe. But I'm like, no, I feel like really good right now with everything that's going on. Like peace. I actually have peace right now. And that's really awesome. Mm. Uh, let's, I'm going to dive a little deeper. Um, you see COVID patients every single day at this point. Every day. Yeah. How yeah. Does that, how does that make you feel? Like, what is your internal uh, thought processes and feelings about that? In the beginning, I would say that I was just like freaked out. I'm like, give me my double, my triple mask and give me my shield and give me my everything. And I'll never forget my first COVID patient. It, him and his family had just came from London. He was actually COVID positive. And I, I, you know, of course it was my first patient. So I'm freaking out, you know, I'm like, oh my God, this is deadly. This is deadly. And so he goes in there and I'm, and I'm trying to calm him down because he is having shortness of breath. He's not feeling good. And I'm trying to explain to him what we're going to do, how he's going to feel. And that I'm there to help him mm -hmm. and I'll start doing my scan. I'm injecting contrast and he gets sick and he needs to throw up and I have to run in and I have to pull him on his side and I have to literally let him throw up all over my shoes. It was awesome. <laughs> so I was like, wow. Oh. And in that same moment, you feel so much sympathy and empathy for somebody. Cause I'm like, he's probably having the worst day of his life. Like he's not feeling good. He's got this deadly virus that we really don't know anything about. And he's throwing up and I'm just like, and he's like, I'm so sorry. And I'm just trying to tell him like, you're okay. It's okay. I'll clean it up. No big deal. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, he's taken off his mask. I'm trying to help him clean up, throw up mm -hmm. like every. And so through since day one to now, I feel very comfortable. I'm like, let me throw on my PPE. Let me keep my distance. You don't feel good. I have to take care of you. And it, it's been a big change and a big ordeal with feeling safe in a hospital with this when you still see that like healthcare workers can get sick from it. So I'm just like, wash your hands, put on my mask correctly, put on my shielding correctly and like do what I'm supposed to do. But remember that these people truly don't feel well. Mm -hmm. And so I try to be strong for the both of us because I'm sure they're scared. Mm. Do you have a, a suggestion for people who may not understand the gravity of coronavirus and how we should, how we should be moving through the world with, with this virus. 
So I think what happens is in hindsight, most of us younger people who get sick, we're going to get through it. We're going to be fine. But it's the individuals that have mom and dad, grandma, uncles, aunts living at home that they don't make it through it. So it's just like, if you're going to go to the party, think twice, make sure you wear a mask, wash your hands. It's not really about you. It's about the older individuals that won't make it through. Mm -hmm. I've seen the 50 year olds not make it. We've seen younger not make it. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it's our older people that don't make it. And I don't know, losing grandma at 70 or 80 because you went to a party and didn't wash your hands or, you know, so on and so forth, it, it'll hit close to home. So mm -hmm. just be careful, wash your hands, wear a mask. Mm -hmm. You know, if we, if I can be at a hospital since March, and consistently scan patients and pick them up and do this and do that and not be sick and not transmit it to anybody, everybody else can, but you just have to take precautions. Okay. Thank you for that, Mecca. And thank you for your services as thank you. a care worker. I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> it's hard. Like sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you get freaked out. Like when you just see how sick they are and then I was lucky enough to find out that my first patient got to go home. And so I was just like, okay, like we have to do this. If this helps the doctor look at their lungs and help them get through something, then like, this is what we have to do. Like, this is the occupation that I chose to have. So I'm there with whatever illness you have. I, I need to scan you and get these images to the doctor so they can help you. Wow. Wow. Let's pivot a little bit. Um, oh. <laughs> Um, you are white, o Oklahoman white. Yes. And Nigerian. Yes. So yes. when the first time you realized you were black? So I can just recall like two major instances where I was like black. Mm -hmm. And one would be growing up in my town, me and my brother being half, we equaled like one black person, right? <laughs> yes. And not, under right? Because I mean, if you see our skin color, we're very light. So nobody ever suspects that I'm half Nigerian. Like, it's just like, they're usually like, oh, you're Samoan or you're Puerto Rican or you're, and I'm like, no, half Nigerian, half white. And so nobody really ever suspects what I end up telling them my ethnicity is. More and so, like, I am Mecca. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm so light, I'm Cree. And this is with a tan, so, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I think growing up and just, not being like it, it was really weird just to know like I had I was popular I had r white friends and then I could never date the boys like that was never okay and I don't know how to explain like couldn't date not that I wasn't allowed but it was just like I felt you could be friends with her but you definitely can't date her mm. okay. and so that's where I felt well shit I'm not white but shit I'm not black like, what am I, right? And so I felt like I went through all, you know, through school in my hometown thinking like, well, what am I, right? And then I went to junior nationals and, and played basketball in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And we had a white coach and there was a handful of us that I guess you would say was black. And we went into a restaurant and we were called the N-word. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, and this is the weirdest moment of my life, but I finally was like, oh yeah, I'm black. Like mm -hmm. the weirdest like moment, right? Cause I finally got called the N word, which is supposed to be very derogatory, but I'm like, oh man, no, like I'm black. Like somebody's recognizing that I am black and it was empowering and degrading at the same time. But I also felt like I have a place in this world. Wow. Like, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel you, I feel you. Yeah, that, that, that right? that yeah. existing in, in and both. So, can you hear me? <laughs> Give me one moment. Okay. Go ahead, continue. Tell me more about that, that moment. Yeah. So that moment for me was so empowering because I, I was in high school and I might've been like 16. I wasn't like, you know, but I finally felt like I have a place. Like they called me the N word. Like 
yes i am like <laughs> i feel like i'm a part of a community i didn't have a community in my hometown it was me and my brother so there was no community and then i was like yes i belong and then it was really weird because later on in college i went to an hbc i went to jackson state in mississippi and it was like well you talk proper you talk weird and i'm like what do you mean they're like L listen to your english and i'm like what's wrong with my english right so then i got a reverse of like i didn't feel black enough so like hometown i don't feel white enough mm. hbc i'm not black enough and i'm just like you fall into this middle ground of where do i belong so i would honestly say that moment of being called the n-word i was like i belong somewhere like mm -hmm. you put me into a category that i felt like i needed in that moment and it was good it felt good even though it was supposed to be bad i was like no i belong that's an interesting uh, experience. Wow. Yeah. When's the first time you realized you were queer? Oh, God. It's the most embarrassing thing ever. Okay. So <laughs> I can remember in my hometown that I was playing softball, like in Kids Inc. It's called Kids Inc. And it's like your name gets thrown in a hat that you get put on a team. And I remember my friend saying, like, oh, you're on the lesbians team. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, what does that mean? And they're like, your coaches, they're together. And I was like, okay, well, they don't act like they're together. So I don't even know what that means. So I was totally naive and oblivious to queer, gay, lesbian. So I was like, okay, cool, whatever. So I go off to college. Boom. My teammate, my roommate, I was like, she's gay. Freaking me out, right? She is gay. She's from Chi Town. She's from Chicago. Mm -hmm. She got Tim's on. She got do rag on. Like, I don't know what any of this means i was totally shocked right i was just like i don't know like i just felt so naive from where i came from like there's just i wasn't exposed to much like for crying out loud i don't even know sushi there was no sushi in oklahoma but so i was like okay my roommate's gay okay that's fine cool like how do i change what do i do right yeah and so i remember there was this girl and for some odd reason i started getting jealous and i was like well, what the hell does this mean this is like the weirdest feeling ever like why am i jealous like she can go to whatever dorm room she wants to go to if she wants to hang out with natalie who which is a teammate of mine then she can because natalie's gay like what the hell and so i remember one of my friends saying well do you like her and i'm like appalled like what i'm not gay and she's like but you're jealous and i'm like yeah and she was like well did you like really date guys i was like yeah i dated guys i had a boyfriend but i never did anything with him and i never understood what that meant i was just like oh no i'm gonna play basketball in college so like no sex no this no that mm -hmm. and finally i just realized like dude i like her mm -hmm. and so i thought well maybe it's just her right and no i just figured out i'm pretty much just lesbian i'm gay that's what it was <laughs> <laughs> and that's just what it was and so that's how i figured out that i was gay i literally was like i have a crush on somebody i'm jealous and then i finally said hey and then that's how i got my first girlfriend freshman in college nice yeah you talk we talk about this a lot um on a personal level excuse me um what is your hopes and aspirations for motherhood Say that one more time. What are your hopes and aspirations for motherhood? Can you, can you hear me? It's breaking up. Oh, shit. We're back at it again. Um, what are your hopes and aspirations for motherhood? <laughs> What are your hopes and aspirations for motherhood? Okay. I have always known that I want to be a mother. Mm -hmm. Always. I've had my son. This is how specific I am. I've had my son's name picked out since I probably was, I don't even know how old. My son's name is Malachi Thomas. Do not steal my son's name. That is my son's name. Okay. I've had this name, right? I've had this name picked out forever. And I always knew I wanted to be a mother and it hasn't been until, and I always thought my partner is going to have our baby. I'm going to ask my brother for his sperm mm -hmm. or 
now I'm actually considering that I might would like to have the child, Whoa. which is totally new and unexpected for me. Cause I was just like, you know, I'm the more, I'm more masculine. Like, don't get me wrong. I love my long hair. I love my boobs. I love everything about me, but I just, I, I'm a tomboy. I'm a tomboy. I've always been a tomboy. I've always been drawn to men's clothing that is like tighter fitting. But recently going through like my breakups and everything, I, I've had my mindset that my partner would have our child and it needed to be my DNA. So either my eggs, my brother's sperm, something like that. And it hasn't been until recently that I actually thought like, I am open to actually having the child myself. Wow. This is which is, I'm hearing you say that. Right. It's mind boggling for me, Mia, because I've literally thought about this the last couple months of actually like going, buying sperm or, you know, being part of, you got to be a member of the sperm bank so you can pay and look at certain, you know, characteristics of what you would want. And that I've actually considered like just doing it myself and being very happy with doing it myself, mm -hmm. wow. which is even my heart right now, just saying that I'm like, Oh my God, I can't I just say it. And I said it out loud and like, yeah, that I've actually considered like I would have the child myself. Wow. I'm, I'm getting a little emotional. Right. right? I'm so happy. I mean, what, however your baby comes in to the world, they are automatically blessed. He's automatic. Yeah, I was like, you have a slew of family that will spoil the baduki out of you. And I and, and I'll be like, yes, these are your this is your aunts and uncles right here, baby. Right. Ready to for yourself. Usher <laughs> you into the world and help yes. you be the happiest human being that we could possibly make you into. Wow, Mecca. Thank you for that exclusive uh job. I can't wait to Right. I, seriously, I just maybe within the last four months have been like I'm open to doing it like before I was like mm -mm, nope uh-uh partner will have it that's it that's how it's going and now I'm like I'm gonna I can call, do it I'm gonna call Sheila and be like you you want to hear what Mecca just said on my interview <laughs> yeah okay. yeah so wow. yeah what oh that's so exciting oh I can't wait to be an auntie um <laughs> What would you say to your 12 year old self? My 12 year old self was going through an ordeal in my household. And I would have just told him like, you're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Everything is going to work out. You're going to blossom into a beautiful human being that is loving and caring. And don't worry about the obstacles that you're facing right now, because these obstacles are going to make you one of the strongest individuals and that's what i would have told my 12 year old self nice what do you want to hear from your 60 year old self i want to hear that i continue to have sexy time in my 60s and hey. <laughs> <laughs> my children are raised and happy and uh i navigated this thing we call life beautifully like taking all the ups and downs with humbleness and with a loving spirit. Cause there's so many things in the world that can bring you down. You can see so much hate, like even at my job, like, you know, we're a trauma center and I see some of the most horrible things and I'm like, why do these have to happen? Like why? And just know that for some odd reason, beauty has to come out of it. So we're seeing these, senseless shootings and stuff and i just keep on telling myself something beautiful has to come out of this like it just can't be all of that something beautiful has to blossom mm. and i would hope <laughs> that when i'm 60 and i'm looking back on everything all the choices i made all the good ones all the bad ones that i'm like blessed that every step of the way good and bad that those choices needed to be made so I lived a beautiful life. And I think my 60 year old self would tell myself like you did a pretty good job. <laughs> wow. That's wow. Wow. I hope, I hope to talk to your 60 year old self and be like, bitch, you did it. I we did it. <laughs> um, I have two more questions, Mecca. How do you experience love? 
I used to think that I was so open arms with love, like any type of love, friendship, love, whatever love. And then I, I figured out through growing up and wanting to have my mom's attention and love so badly that I'm not very good with receiving it actually. And I would have never really thought that. And I think through growing up and figuring things out about myself that I'm a lot more open to it and understanding that we are all different and we all love differently and that you and to truly love somebody, you have to understand who they are. Right. Mm -hmm. And I've learned to love my mother for who she is and who she will never be. And I'm hoping my mom learns to love me for who I am and who I will never be. Mm -hmm. And once you can do that with individuals, there's no stopping. Wow. Like, just like with all of you siblings, like I love you for Mia and I love you for the mad Mia and I love you for the loving Mia and I love Sheila for the crazy Sheila and I love Layla Bug for the crazy Layla and Vito. I love everybody for who they are. You have to love somebody for who they are and for who they're never going to be because if not, then you never understand them. Mm. And love is supposed to be totally unconditional. And I think that's one of the hardest things to do is to love somebody unconditionally. Mm -hmm. And you have to tell yourself day in and day out, like you have to love them for who they are. And it's hard and I'm learning the hard way. <laughs> I'm learning to love myself within this, mm -hmm. love myself for who I am, for who I'm never gonna be. And uh, it's hard, but I'm enjoying it. So thus far, I'm enjoying it. I love you. I love you too. And I thank you and for, for loving I'm so thankful that you made me or asked me to do this because I got to dive deep into thoughts and memories and things that I've never talked about, but they were there. And so, um, yeah, like this has been so great. Like you don't even know reading these questions. I started crying so many times and I was like, okay, now that you've cried, you can do the interview without crying. <laughs> I um, do the interview without crying. It's so interesting because I've had um, interviews that like go by very fast and they're fun and they're vibrant and we're like, you know, kikiing. And then you're my second interview today and I, I'm, my first interview made me cry. And then both of you guys were talking, both of y'all are talking about unconditional love, but like from family. And I didn't realize how, much, I knew it like, like, on a head level but like on a heart level like how much unconditional love like really means to me and how it is very much present in my life and just in the world and hearing both of uh both of your your stories so i'm just an emotional bitch today <laughs> oh so i'm telling you i've been crying and i'm like ah keep keep it together you ain't even got no <laughs> mascara on but keep it together <laughs> All right, Becca. Oh, but I do love you so much. And you've seen, um, you have seen so many versions of who I've become 1.0, 2.0. And you have been someone that's consistently been, uh, been stable in my life. And you tell me what I don't want to hear. And you tell me what I need to hear. And you give me hugs when I need them, even though I don't want them. And <laughs> I, I remember that. And I appreciate you for that. Um, last question if you could change your identity would you and i'm expanding this question to like you know if not from like black to white but if you wanted to be like you know a sequoia tree for example would you choose that i would honestly might have said growing up that i would have loved to have changed my skin color mm. growing up in my town was hard never being young and not being bullied but just not feeling like you didn't belong was so hard mm -hmm. it was hard and so I might have said when I was younger like oh, can I be lighter can I be lighter and I mean and you see I'm so light and now I'm like I would not change not one ounce about myself because I feel like growing up through that I grew to love because I come from a family that I don't know if they're racist or not. I really don't know. I don't know. I know that they are very set in their ways. 
and I know they are probably very Trump and that is okay. Mm -hmm. But, and they've never said the negative things to me. Mm -hmm. Like, and so growing up through that and having those experiences have made me who I am. And I feel like that's why I do the profession that I do. Cause I'm like, I had to learn family with not really knowing who they truly are when it comes to certain things, because those, those opinions wouldn't be voiced. Mm -hmm. Like even today, <clears throat> me saying that I'm gay doesn't come out. It's not a topic up for discussion, but it's just something that's like, she never brings home a guy. She's only brought home girls. And I don't, I don't feel like it's hush hush because I think they know that I'm no nonsense. Like if you don't like it, then hit the road, Jack. Like don't invite me, don't come around me, don't whatever. But now that I am me, <clears throat> I feel like I've learned so much. Mm. I grew up in a community that I didn't feel welcomed. And now I'm in a community where I feel very welcomed. And I feel like that gave me this humbleness of accepting whoever comes through the door. Mm -hmm. So you're homeless. I don't have a problem with you being homeless. Like things happen. I'm going to treat you like you're the same person that came in and has fucking Gucci on. Like you're a human being and you deserve your autonomy and you deserve to be cared for in, in in any sense of the word because a lot of times we'll forget that they are human just like us they have wants they have needs just like us they want to be loved just like us mm -hmm. so i would say i wouldn't change myself for the world i love being woman i love being mixed i love being a loud mouth i love the family that i have been accustomed to with you know, yelling and kicking and screaming. And I love every ounce of everything that's happened to me, the good and the bad, because it's totally made me who I am. And I can't imagine not being me. Like, I can't imagine not going through all the stuff that I've been through. Like, I can't imagine it because I don't think it would have given me the loving spirit that I have. Is there anything else in this moment that you want to express that I may have not touched upon? I want to tell you, Mia, that you are freaking amazing. And me and you have been through some ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, I love you with all my heart. You are a sister to me. And I am so very proud of you that everything that you have overcome and everything that you have and have not even spoken about with somebody, because you are amazing, you are beautiful, and I absolutely love you. And I hope you know that. And every time that I don't show it, I apologize. But you are loved by me through and through. Thank you. <laughs> and your work, I, every time you have a new video, I'm showing somebody. You have a new poem, I'm like, my sister's doing big things. So you keep reaching for the stars because you have so many people in your corner. So many. And even when you think we're not that in your corner, we are in your corner because you are absolutely loved. <laughs> thank you, my friend, I love you too. Okay. And thank you for letting me be a part of this. <laughs> this was awesome. And I said I wasn't gonna cry and I didn't cry to the end, so I'm doing good. <laughs> but this has been so, um, really, ooh, ooh, I'm gonna cry for the rest of the day. I can, I can do it. <laughs> I love you. So. I love you too, definitely. Okay, I'm gonna stop this right here.